Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome to the lectures on immunology and welcome to today's uh, lecture on the topic cytokines. So the term cytokines you might have been uh, very well acquainted with by now uh, because most of the processes or uh, the immunological processes that we have described so far some way or other there are involvement of the cytokines. So, uh, you have come across several uh, uh, names of these cytokine molecules by now like the interleukins uh, or the chemokines. I, I, I myself have uh, taught you in some of the core in some of the classes in the earlier classes on uh, innate immunity or in adaptive immune system. The overview when we describe the overview of the innate and the adaptive immune system, uh, this term uh, cytokines have uh, we have come across several times. And so, we need to know in details what these cytokines are actually and how do they act. So, before we go into what these cytokines are or how they act upon, uh, on, so we need to know what they are, what these cytokines are. So, these cytokines are one of the most important effector molecules in the immune system. And uh, they are relevant in both in case of our innate system as well as in case of the adaptive system. So, be it the innate or be it the adaptive system, the cytokines are very, very important. We have seen the roles of the cytokines particularly in case of T cell and B cell activation, maturation, activation and differentiation. Had there been no cytokines, these events would not have occurred. So, for these events, we need these cytokines. What are these cytokines? So, the cytokines are basically uh, small proteins or uh, very small uh, glycoproteins, even they are glycoproteins or proteins, which mediates this kind of action by communicating between the different cells. So, say they, they are basically uh, important molecules that are required for the communication between the cells. So, they are cell to cell communication molecules, they are small molecules, small proteins or glycoproteins that are required for cell to cell communication, mostly secreted by the leukocytes, but not that only by the leukocytes, but they are secreted by other cell types as well, but they are mostly uh, secreted by the leukocytes. So, and uh, that is where the name originates from uh, that we have come across the names like the interleukins. If you remember, we have several times uh, used the term interleukins. So, the interleukins as the name it suggests it comes from the fact that these cytokines or these interleukins to be precise, they are produced or secreted by one leukocyte and they act on another leukocyte. So, that is why they are sometimes designated as interleukins that is connection between the leukocytes. They are the connecting molecules between the leukocytes. So, that is why they are called the interleukins also sometimes. Not all cytokines are interleukins. So, a big class of them are interleukins. There are also chemokines and other factors like interferons, the tumor necrosis factor, these are all they all fall under this broad classification of the cytokines. Now, the thing is before we start knowing about the cytokines, their mechanisms of action and all these things, we also need to know how these cytokines they actually work. So, the cytokines they can work in primarily in three different ways. One 
is they can be autocrine so autocrine means it is secreted by one of the leukocytes or the cells and it acts upon the same cell so it works on the same cell so if you remember interleukin 2 for example secreted by the T lymphocytes and they work on the T lymphocytes or the same on the same T lymphocytes so that that is an autocrine example of an autocrine secretion so, it can be autocrine, it can be paracrine, that means they are secreted from one cell and the target cell is located in the vicinity, so close to it. So, it works on another cell which is located in a close vicinity to that cell. So, that is a paracrine and it can also be endocrine, some of them can be endocrine, which means that they are secreted from one cell type, enters into the bloodstream and they act on a cell which is distantly located from this cell. So, that is an endocrine. <clears throat> so, the target cell, this is the target cell, this is always called the target cell. So, the target cell is distantly located. When the target cell is located in the vicinity or next to it, that is a paracrine and when it is located distantly, that is endocrine. So, that means it has to travel through the uh, circulation and then it works on the target cell. So, now these cytokines they can mediate their action in at least three different ways. What we have seen is the cytokines can exhibit different types of action. What are the different types of action? That means they can be pleiotropic, that means one single cytokine can work on many target cells or do many functions that is called a pleiotropy. It can show redundant function that means more than one cytokine can exhibit the same type of function or it can be synergistic that means one of the cytokine is helping the other cytokine in mediating the action that is a synergism or a synergy or it can be antagonistic that means one of the cytokines can inhibit the action of another cytokine. So, that is an antagonistic action. So, there are at least four types of actions that the cytokines can do one for example, pleiotropy, so one cytokine for example, interleukin 4 can mediate at least three different activities like activation of and the proliferation of the B cells. activation or proliferation of B cells for example. They can also uh, help in thymocyte proliferation and they can also help in mast cell pro proliferation. So, this kind of an action mediated by a cytokine for example, like interleukin 4 for example, it exhibits pleiotropy that is a single cytokine can exhibit more than one function. So, that is a pleiotropy. Then more than one cytokine can also sometime exhibit same function 
and that is called redundancy of function. So, that is a redundant function that means more than one cytokines it can be 2, 3, 4 cytokines they can help in same kind of action. For example, interleukin 2, IL 2, IL 4, IL 5 they all help in B cell proliferation. So, these cytokines like interleukin 2, interleukin 4 or interleukin 5, so this is 5 so, or interleukin 5, they all can perform the same function like B cell proliferation. Again, cytokines like IL 4 and IL 5, so this is uh, known as redundancy and they can also exhibit synergy. For, for example, IL 4 and IL 5, interleukin 4, interleukin 5, they both together that means, in case of there is a there is a basic difference between redundancy and synergy. What is that? In case of redundancy the two cytokines they exhibit independently, independently the two cytokines they exhibit same function or they perform the same function. But in case of synergy it is a synergistic action. So, that means, they together perform one single function and that is called a synergy. So, for example, they these two cytokines interleukin 4 and interleukin 5 they together can help in um, uh, uh, class switching for example, B cell class switching. So, they both together can help in synergistically they can help in B cell class switching and again a fourth situation can be antagonistic. So, antagonistic situation is like interleukin IL 4 the action of IL 4 in B cell class switching sometimes is inhibited that is inhibition inhibited by INF gamma interferon gamma. So, this can be inhibited by INF gamma and that is called antagonism or inhibition also. So, that is also inhibits the class switching. So, it inhibits or antagonizes class switching. So, as we have seen at least in case of the cytokines the mode of action of the cytokines can be at least divided into four different ways like the pleiotropic action, redundant action, synergistic action or antagonistic action. So, pleiotropy means a single cytokine can perform many functions like for example, interleukin 4 can perform at least three different functions like activation or proliferation of the B cells, thymocyte proliferations or even mast cell proliferations. Redundancy, so interleukin 2, interleukin 4 or interleukin 5 all of them can perform same action like B cell proliferation. Synergistic action involves interleukin 4 and interleukin 5 for example, they can together they can also uh, do uh, functions like class switching in B cells and antagonistic action is for example, interleukin 4 the activity of interleukin 4 on class switching of the B cells can be inhibited by INF gamma. So, that is an antagonistic or inhibitory action. Now, coming to what type of functions these cytokines they do as, as I described in the beginning or told in the beginning that they can perform so, they are the main molecules that are required for cell to cell communication and they can perform a lot of functions. So, by now 
we have already uh, read a lot about the inert system, adaptive system, uh, uh, the very initial phases of inert uh, immunity, inflammatory responses and we have seen that in almost all of these cases we have involvement of cytokines. If you remember uh, my one of my initial classes where we described about activation of the macrophages in the phagocytosis and then uh, the macrophage is activated and a macrophage is a major source of cytokine. It is a major source of cytokine. It starts immediately, it, it mediates its action by secretion of different types of cytokines. In all these cytokines that are being secreted, they mediate different different actions. They can mediate different actions like when they help in the uh, T cell uh, activation and development, they can help in uh, inflammatory responses, they can help in uh, systemic responses like they can help in um, uh, or in induces uh, production of complement proteins from the liver they can help in hematopoiesis. So, there are lots of actions that immediately starts when there is secretion of cytokines from this activated macrophages. So, let us see what are the different functions that cytokines can perform uh, when there is a secretion of cytokines from in response to a invasion or a tissue damage. So, when there, were, when there is a tissue damage, if you remember uh, one of our initial uh, classes, initial lectures, we described it like a macrophage and the macrophage is a one of the uh, uh, antigen presenting cells. So, it can present antigen for example. So, it can also present antigen and it can activate a T cell, a naive uh, T cell for example, a T helper cell. So, if this is a Th cell or a CD4 plus cell, so it can interact with this with its T cell receptor and with the CD4, CD4 co-receptor and the TCR, the T cell receptor and this macrophage is an activated macrophage. So, this is a let us say this is a macrophage, it is an activated macrophage and this will then start to produce. So, there will be internal signaling within the macrophage and there will be gene expression, transcription, gene expression and that would lead to secretion of the cytokines. The cytokines will be secreted. Now, once the cytokines are secreted, so the cytokines that are secreted that can perform a lot of different functions. So, now what are the functions that they can perform? One, they can enhance inflammation or inflammatory responses. They can activate uh, the adaptive immune system. they can activate hematopoiesis and of course, they can help in T cell activation and this in turn will also help in the adaptive immune system. So, if you look here in this picture over here, the cytokines are secreted or they are produced from this kind of an activated macrophage for example and this activated macrophage it has the ability to present the antigen or the foreign antigen to a T helper cell and activate the T helper cell and that too uh, is mediated by the secretion of cytokines. So, this activated macrophage is now competent to produce express the different genes for uh, the genes that encode for different cytokines and those cytokines will be produced and those cytokines can now mediate a lot of functions. What are the different functions that these cytokines can mediate? It can enhance inflammation, it can do hematopoiesis, it can uh, uh, activate the adaptive immune system. So, adaptive immune system means it can activate the T cell mediated as well as the B, B cell mediated or the humoral immune system as well and it can also 
help in the T cell activation and differentiation. So, these are this is kind of a very uh, brief a very general overview what a cytokine from a activated macrophage can perform. So, as I told that the cytokines are mostly we can but I mean the most of the cytokines they have been named like this IELs if you look here the IELs those they are the interleukins that means they are produced from one of the leukocytes and they work on another leukocyte. So, that is why they are known as the interleukins. Now, the thing is apart from the interleukins there are other cytokines as well it is not only the interleukins. It is true that the interleukins are the major class of the cytokines. So, there are IL 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 a lot of ILs different ILs or the interleukins and they have varied roles. We have we have already studied uh, some of those roles while uh, we went through uh, B cell maturation differentiation and all those things. Uh, also in, in case of T cell uh, activation and maturate uh, and differentiation. So, we have already seen how, how these um, uh, cytokines they help in T cell activation as well as formation of different T cell subtypes. So, different T cell subtypes they produce different cytokines or they express genes of different cytokines and that mediates different actions. So, these things we have already known a little bit. Now, uh, these so, so how how these cytokines are being classified so these cytokines are mainly broadly classified into four different classes so what are the four different classes of cyto cytokines one the hematopoietins the hematopoietin class of cytokines or the hematopoietin family of cytokines secondly the interferon family we will discuss about the interferons later. So, interferon family of cytokines is a very important class of cytokines because interferon class of cytokines are one of the first line of defense of the body against a viral invasion. So, when there is a viral attack these interferons are kind of the first line of defense of our body against a viral invasion. So, whenever there is a virus attacking our body it is the interferon molecules that tries to cope up or tries to defend. So, uh, apart from the hematopoietin family the interferon family we also have a third important family as the TNF or the tumor the tumor necrosis factors the TNF family and finally, that we have already told several times maybe the chemokines. These chemokines are another class of cytokines which we have been discussing several times from the beginning of uh, our uh, lectures that these chemokines are involved mostly or they mediate mostly chemo attraction. So, that means they attract they help in attracting the cells. We have seen the role of chemokines for example, in uh, neutrophil extravasation, in inflammation, in role in inflammatory responses. So, chemokines has varied roles and also we have seen in the role of the chemokines um, in licensing of the dendritic cells in the uh, B cell uh, activation in the B cell uh, development activation processes from uh, movement of this uh, B cells uh, from the dark zone to the light zone. So, chemokines have various various activities they are mostly they are described as the chemo attractants which can attract one cell from one zone or one region to the another region. So, they help in migration of the cells and that is why they are uh, they help in chemotaxis. So, that is that is a chemokine group of uh, group of uh, cytokines. So, now, uh, so these are the four broad families uh, of the cytokines and this particular uh, distribution is based on the structure of the cytokines. So, it is a structure based classification. 
But if we look into the cytokines, uh, as I described in the beginning also, that these cytokines, how they, how they do their function. So, cytokines primarily bind to cytokine receptors. Receptors are present on the surface of the target cell and if this is the cytokine molecule, it goes and binds to the receptor and then there is a downstream signaling pathway that helps in mediating its action. So, that is a very simple thing. Although it is simple, it is it's not really that simple. So, we will, we will describe, uh, we will try to make it simple and lucid how these cytokines they actually act on or they actually perform their functions based on the receptors. So, uh, let us see what are the different receptor families or the subfamilies of the cytokines. So, these are the receptor families the receptors, the cytokine receptors. What are the different cytokines receptors that are present on different cell types? So, there are at least five different classes of cytokine receptors and cytokines, their functions are actually in, in principle, they are classified according to the receptor to which they bind. So, there are uh, at least five different types of receptor and the first type of receptor is the immunoglobulin, immunoglobulin family, family of receptors in one of the major cytokines is interleukin 1. Then comes the most broad type of cytokine receptors that is kind of uh, ubiquitously present in many, many, many cells or most of the cells and most of the cytokines they bind to this class of receptors there is a class 1 receptor. So, this is the major cytokine receptor that is expressed in most of the cell types because they offer binding to uh, these different types of interleukins like IL 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9 everything. So, these are also known as the uh, hematopoietin class of cytokine receptors. Uh, and they bind to, for example, uh, interleukin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9 and many other, the GMCSF, all of these cytokines, they bind to the class 1 receptor. Then we have the class 2 receptor. The class 2 receptors, we have the class 2 receptors and this. So, class 2 receptors, they actually bind to the interferons, the INF, interferons, interferon alpha, beta, gamma, interferon alpha, beta, gamma and all these, they bind to these are the class 2 receptors. Then we have the tumor necrosis factor receptors or the TNF family of receptors, the TNF family receptors and they bind to the TNF the TNF alpha, the TNF beta. And finally, of course, we have the chemokine receptors, the chemokine receptors and these, these receptors, they are particularly a bit different from the rest of all the cytokine receptors that we have seen so far, particularly in the way they transduce the signal because the chemokine receptors are mostly associated with G proteins. So, they are G protein coupled receptors. If you have read about the G protein coupled receptors in your in, in your cell biology or molecular biology uh, backgrounds. So, you must be knowing what these GPCRs are, the G protein coupled receptors are. So, these chemokines are mostly associated with the G proteins, chemokine receptors. So, now these are the different the four different classes of the cytokine receptors and the chemokine receptors. So, there are five different classes of the cytokine receptors starting from the immunoglobulin type, the class 1, the class 1 is one of the most widest or the widely uh, bound receptors among the cytokine receptors, the class 2 um, which is the, uh, the interferon class of receptors or the INF alpha beta gamma receptors, then you have the TNF family receptors that is the TNF alpha beta they bind to the TNF family receptors and also you have the chemokine receptors. So, the cytokines they bind to this 
different types of receptors and mediates their action. And this action means there is a signaling downstream of receptor ligand binding. So, when this ligand, the ligand is the cytokine here. So, the cytokine molecule, the protein or the glycoprotein that is being uh, that is being secreted, that cytokine molecule is the ligand and that binds to the receptor. So, uh, due to the advancement of molecular biology, recombinant technology, recombinant DNA technology, many of the cytokines and their receptors, their uh, structures has already been very well established and it has been very well studied how or what kind of binding occurs between the cytokines and their corresponding receptors. And since this is known or these things are now being very well studied, so we uh, already have a fair idea how this cytokine uh, binding to the corresponding receptor actually works and what kind of signaling is actually uh, working downstream of that receptor ligand binding and that helps in understanding or explaining many of the phenomena, many of the things, uh, many of the things that the, that the cytokines do. For example, this um, redundancy, the synergy or the antagonism that the cytokines exhibit in their action that can be very well uh, explained by uh, this binding of the receptors and the downstream signaling that actually occurs. So, from the receptor structures, from the receptor ligand interactions, the affinity between the receptor and the ligand. So, whenever there is a ligand and, and, and a receptor, uh, the term affinity comes. So, if there is an affinity, uh, depending on the affinity, how high the affinity is or how low the affinity is, there are different signalings. So, these things can be very well explained and we will try to understand in our next lecture that how uh, depending on these different receptor structures, the cytokines can exhibit their functions like redundancy or antagonism. So, uh, for today this much is uh, that is where we end and uh, we will be talking about the cytokine receptors and their modes of action in our upcoming class. Thank you very much.